Welcome to Fabled Ventures, where our story begins in the vibrant world of Ventus, an archipelago of islands floating above a sea of clouds. In a realm filled with magic, intrigue, and adventure, we find ourselves in the hamlet of Vind. It's a humble place, nestled in the lush landscape of northwest Ventus, yet it harbors dreams of heroism and the promise of glory. Our tale unfolds at the Heroes Academy, a unique matchmaking service connecting aspiring heroes with wealthy patrons seeking bold allies. Here, destinies intertwine, and fate brings together a diverse group of adventurers. Meet Aesop Tiern, a bard with the heart of a wanderer. A two-tailed minotaur fresh from Tidalfall University, Aesop is on a quest for self-discovery and yearns for new experiences that will shape his fate. Then there's Claxostus Aliox, aka Clax, a skilled fighter whose path has been marred by shadows. A former member of the Consonant City Guard, Clax seeks vengeance against Selni Vaughn, a corrupt noblewoman. With a secretive contact guiding him, Clax aims to dismantle her sinister operations. Drauda Nelik, an enigmatic ranger and rogue, adds another layer to our party. An Air Genasi half vampire, Drauda's mission from the Vampire Nation of Mirsky drives them to uncover and thwart anti vampire initiatives in Ventus. Next is Flint Loudpocket, a crafty artificer with a taste for freedom and wealth. Once a smuggler for the Jade Mask, Flint seeks to distance himself from his past while also seeking to make amends for it. And finally, we have Mouse Forest Flower, a druid from the distant island of Sparrowden. After a fateful crash landing in Ventus, she found solace at the Heroes Academy, hoping to raise funds to rebuild her airship while forging bonds with her newfound friends. As the party embarks on their first quest together, they stumble upon an ancient stone star chart, igniting a sense of wonder. Inspired by the discovery, Mouse encourages her companions to adopt the name The Left Stars. This name symbolizes their uniqueness, representing a group of stars left out of larger constellations, yet burning brightly on their own. With their group name chosen, the Left Stars set forth into the unknown, ready to face whatever challenges await in the ever-expanding world of Ventus. Through the Heroes Academy, the Left Stars were matched with their patron, Avendir, the Baron of Brandy. A famous brandy maker, Avendir sought like-minded allies to help him transition into nobility after being elected Lord of Vind. To test the spirit of the party, he set them several quests. During one quest, Aesop discovered a magical sapphire containing the spirit of Neptus, a young water and air elemental. The Left Stars also befriended Nau, a purple dragonborn woman who later joined Avendir's crew on his airship, the Azure Phoenix. After solving a riddle-laden mission, the Left Stars were sent to deliver Avendir's prized brandy to Mistral, a town paralyzed by fear of vampires disrupting trade. The sphere was fueled by local anti-vampire gangs, which masked the actual local conflict, a thieves' guild war. Upon arriving in Mistral, the Left Stars realized the townspeople's fear of vampires was a smokescreen hiding the rivalry between thieves' guilds. The Jade Mask, a state-sponsored guild, was vying for control over the local factions, leaving the townsfolk vulnerable. The party made it their mission to break up the guild war and restore commerce while discrediting the town's unfounded fears surrounding vampires, which they were eventually successful with. Having successfully completed all of Avendir's quests, the Left Stars received an invitation to the City of Celebration, Horizon. Here, they would formally accept Avendir as their patron, and Aesop would perform in the Tournament of Tales, a competition where performers from across Vind showcased their glorious stories. Aesop was victorious and was rewarded with the first cask of Avendir's new and final brandy vintage, a prize worth a small fortune. Alongside this, Aesop received a kingly quest from a Unifier soldier dispatched from the Sun Castle to capture the Great Sky Dragon, though the king's motives remained unclear. During the tournament, the Left Stars encountered the noblewoman Clax dreaded meeting, Sel Nivan. Gaining the support of his allies, Clax seeks to dismantle her operation and bring her to justice, but she left Horizon before much could be done. 
The party also crossed paths with Arcana, an enigmatic archmage who took a special interest in Mouse and her star-powered magic. Before leaving, the mayor of Horizon hired the Left Stars to rescue miners from a local quarry, which turned out to be an ancient earth elemental tomb. They confronted a cursed elemental named Ludum, who was ultimately killed, but not before his curse spread to Neptus. Neptus saved Aesop's life, and Aesop resolved to heal Neptus at the earliest opportunity. The next leg of their journey took them to the capital city of Consonance, where Clax met his contacts, Lieutenant Longol and Eula Fanala. The party purchased a magical blue harlequin flower, a reagent tied to drugs that Selnivon's operation has been peddling. They used the flower in an ancient elven ritual, glimpsing a secret meeting between Selni and her agents, revealing the scope of her operation. Frustration grew within Clax as progress against Selnivon remained slow. Despite his pleas for action against her, the Left Stars prioritized tracking down Aesop's family on a faraway island plagued by elemental chaos. Joining the Recovery Squad, a small army of Minotaur soldiers who guard Ventus from elemental incursions, they battled strange elemental aberrations to restore stability to the island and bring Aesop's family home. During this adventure, they uncovered another ancient stone star tablet, depicting a constellation resembling Clax's birthmark, unlocking new powers within him. This inspired Mouse to further her understanding of the stars, and she reached out to her mentor from Sparrowden, Olive, only to find out she had suffered an injury at the hands of Arcana, who had visited her. The specifics of their meeting remained a mystery, but Olive's star magic had been weakened. Communicating with Arcana through a star-powered sending spell, Mouse learned troubling news. Stars were disappearing, and Arcana was determined to discover the cause. Upon returning to Consonance, the Left Stars found that their investigation into Selnivon had not gone unnoticed. Elua's agent was found murdered. Fax's frustration had reached a boiling point, and he urged the party to take decisive action against Selnivon. The party agreed to help, and Drada had some unfinished vampire business in town that may provide some leads. Flint also confided in Clax about inadvertently aiding an anti-vampire group called the Dawnbringers, expressing his desire to make amends, furthering the need to follow Drada's lead. Drada and Flint entered a vampire gambling hall to befriend Hardhold, its proprietor. However, they quickly found themselves face to face with Master Krex, a vampire who serves Selny Vaughn. Tensions escalated as the party confronted Master Krex, but Hardhold's mistrust with the party forced them to leave. Later, Drada returned to pledge their support to Hardhold, who set the party on a quest to investigate and repair the Blood Bank of Ventus, a facility that once allowed vampires to live peacefully in the city with a secure blood supply. The Left Stars uncovered evidence of captured vampires, revealing the plight of several vampires Flint had encountered in his past. Reporting back to Hardhold, they earned his respect, and he promised to arrange a meeting with Master Krex regarding Selny Vaughn. Several evenings later, as the party celebrated their progress, Master Krex eventually cornered Clax in a theater. He vowed to become an informant on Selny Vaughn, and promised to alert the Left Stars if an opportunity to strike presented itself. With one of Selny Vaughn's agents turned, the party began hunting down her remaining operatives, starting with the mad scientist gnome Rajan Quickdust. When the Left Star stormed Rajan's compound, Rajan talked his way out of certain death, revealing that Bergella, another one of Selnivon's agents, was meant to deliver a special type of vapor to her. Rajan claimed Bergella was last seen heading toward Mistral. The Left Stars let Rajan go, and he returned to Consonance vowing to inform Selnivon only that his operation had been disrupted, withholding the party's involvement. Hey everyone, I'm Kevin, the Dungeon Master for Fabled Ventures. This campaign started back in 2022, and after a break earlier this year, we're excited to jump back in. At the time we paused, the party had just hit level 10, and the story was branching out in many different directions. Star magic, vampires, noblewoman villains, and more. To get things back on track, we streamlined the narrative, focusing on what mattered most to both the players and the story. What you'll see next reflects some of the key decisions we made to reorient the campaign, with a 90-day in-game time skip after chasing Grage and Quickdust in Mistral. 
It's not traditional for a D&D campaign to hit the skip button like this, but hey, that's what we did. So here's what happened. After learning from Grage and Quickdust to search for Brugella in Mistral, the Left Stars gave chase. Unfortunately, Brugella's circus troop caravan fled just before they arrived, leaving behind bodies bleeding from their eyes. Aesop recognized that the deaths were caused by the Dream spell, likely the same spell that alerted Brugella to leave. Based on the description, Clax connected these murders to others tied to Selnivon, and the party realized that they needed to tread carefully. They couldn't risk becoming targets in their dreams. Over the next 90 days, the Left Stars stayed under the radar, completing smaller tasks and gathering critical information on Selnivon's operations. Elua Fenala was sent to the dragonborn city of Ildre to track down Garnet, a red dragonborn linked to Selni. Master Krex shared that Selny's operation had gone underground, and Grage and Quickdust had disappeared, likely dead. Mouse researched Clax's star constellation birthmark, learning it's called the Maw, one of five that form a larger dragon constellation. Flint helped repair the Blood Bank, restoring the vampire population's access to essential resources in consonants. Drada checked in with their contacts at the Eclipse, and discovered that several peers from Mursky were dispatched, helping to investigate the Dawnbringers. Aesop's research into the Great Sky Dragon revealed how it's an avatar of an elemental deity who can control the clouds. Drada suspects that Mursky had already captured the dragon's power, raising questions about the king's motives. Aesop also sought out the expertise of water genasi experts who were able to cure Neptus of Ludum's curse, restoring him as Aesop's ally. Meanwhile, the Left Stars upgraded their gear. Flint had time to enchant everyone's gear, freeing up his artificer infusion slots to craft powerful magic items for himself. The party also bought a number of magic items from stores abroad, shipped to them directly through the Ventus Guild Federation. And after holding on to it for most of their time together, the party traded half of Avendir's brandy to a local potion shop, earning store credit to fund future adventures. As for the other half, they decided to keep a few bottles for themselves, either for personal use or as gifts for noble allies. Finally, after spending 90 days recovering and preparing for their next adventure, Mouse received an invitation from Arcana to visit him at the Source Institute in Flamebridge. With multiple roads leading to Flamebridge, including information about the Dawnbringers, the Jade Mask, and more, the next chapter of Fabled Ventures is set to take the party into new and dangerous territory. What comes next? Tune into Season 2 of Fabled Ventures to find out.